And good evening, New Mexico. It's like living in one of those end of the world movies or the village is a ghost town. That's just two of the things we are hearing tonight about one of the most beautiful places in the entire state. That would be Ruidoso. Two massive wildfires are still burning there tonight. Thousands of people have had to simply leave the village and surrounding areas. We've also confirmed that one person has died. Those two fires are still burning out of control. Now we want to give the people who live in the metro a little bit of perspective on just how big the fires are. When you add the acreage of both the South Fork and Salt fires, we're talking, as the governor mentioned, about more than 20,000 combined acres. That's approximately 32 and a half square miles. That red box on the screen now shows just how much of Albuquerque these two fires combined would cover. You could say that's a pretty decent majority of the Northeast Heights. Tonight we're bringing you complete team coverage of those wildfires, starting off with our very own Griffin Rushton. He joins us live from ENMU Roswell, which is just one of the many evacuation centers that is welcoming Rudosa residents again tonight, Griffin. Yeah, that's right, Trevor, and it is busy. There are at least 120 evacuees here tonight, and many, many more will be spending the night at nearly a dozen other evacuation shelters across southeast New Mexico. Now, that's more than we typically see during these wildfire events, but this is not a typical crisis. There are two wildfires essentially surrounding Ruidoso tonight, the South Fork fire on the north side and the Salt fire on the south side. Together, as we mentioned, they've scorched nearly 20 21,000 acres so far, which is a relatively small size compared to New Mexico's recent historic wildfires, but these have been incredibly destructive wildfires. According to the most recent update, fire officials estimate these fires have destroyed uh, at least 1,400 homes or other structures, and you can see some of that damage in this video we took driving down Gavilan Canyon Road earlier this afternoon. Now, that number is uh, almost certainly going to go up in the coming days as the we start to thoroughly assess the damage. Now, as we mentioned, we saw some of that damage firsthand today, and I can tell you it is startling to see just how much is gone in just the first 24 hours since the village was evacuated. The embers are still hot in Ruidoso. Valleys of scorched trees dotted with sizzling homes, all while fire crews continue their battle on the ground and from the sky. This is what's left of what appears to have been a motel here in Ruidoso, less than 24 hours after the village was evacuated. You can see this building is just now a pile of rubble, and you can see there's even smoke still coming up out of the damage. Now, this fire moved incredibly fast and you can see that in this parking lot. There are several cars that are just uh, molten really into the parking lot as the fire came through and you can see just how hot it was burning with this evidence right here of what was at one point liquid metal coming out of this car. This is a very sobering sight to see and definitely not the only example of destruction here in Ruidosa right now. This pile of smoldering rubble used to be the Swiss Chalet Inn, a popular hotel with scenic mountain views. Now, it's just one of the many ruins telling the story of a community forced to evacuate at a moment's notice. It was really scary with the ashes coming down. Like, it was like snow falling down. It was pretty bad. It was scary here. Yeah. Many evacuees only took what they could carry. So my wife was, let's grab our, what we need that's important to us, our papers, our you know, pictures, or some clothes, and let's get going. We left everything else behind. Now he's hoping everyone saved what matters most. It's been tough because I've never been through this before. And I just keep getting you know, cracked up about it because it's just, I know there's other families that are trying to look for their loved ones. Yeah, officials confirmed tonight at least one person was killed in these fires, making this the second deadly wildfire incident in Ruidoso in just two years. That's after two people were killed during the McBride fire back in 2022. Now, officials tell me an emergency management team is expected to be fully up and running tomorrow morning, and we're going to be working to get you a better look at what that firefight looks like then. Trevor? Yeah, Griffin, that car, that hotel just symbolizes, unfortunately, what we're probably going to see a lot more of in the coming days. Thank you so much for the update.
Let's turn to our chief meteorologist, Eddie Garcia. As you heard Griffin mention, the number of buildings or structures damaged jumping just now from 500 to 1,400. Uh, you had a pretty strong reaction when you saw that video too, Eddie. Yeah, I can't believe it, Trevor. Uh, you know, I, as I've said before, I uh, grew up uh, going to Ruidoso. Yeah. I can't believe the Swiss Chalet Motel is gone. It looks like that now. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that's one of the many staples in Ruidoso, yeah. and uh, your heart goes out to the people there. Uh, certainly, this is going to be uh, a long time uh, recovering. But right now, we are looking at the active firefight. Uh, this is a live shot of Midtown Ruidosa right now. Uh, some good news here is that the wind speeds have subsided a little bit. We're still getting an occasional gust of 22 miles per hour, but compared to where we were certainly yesterday and earlier this afternoon, things are at least looking calmer right now. That's some good news, but the other side of that coin is the immense amount of smoke being produced by both these fires is causing some health concerns. Air quality alerts in effect for areas like Lincoln County here. Uh, this is going to be one of many counties, I think, over the next few days that will be experiencing that very unhealthy air. Right now, the wind speeds are dying down across most of the state. And you know what? We've been looking at a very rough week so far, but relief is coming. I'm going to be tracking some rain showers, cooler temperatures, and I'll show you where I'm expecting it and most critically the timing. All those details straight ahead. Emergency declarations for the local areas in the state have been fully executed. That means resources can flow uh, readily. Resources that we know the southeastern portion of the state desperately needs. Now, earlier today, the governor declared that state of emergency for Lincoln County and also the Mescalero Apache Reservation to help our communities that are now in crisis mode. Cassie Foote joins us this evening. So, Cassie, you got an update there from the governor this afternoon. What did she say, though, about how they're trying to manage what can only be called a crisis situation? Right. So, between federal and state resources, there are 17 agencies with 800 personnel personnel in that area right now, including the National Guard. Mm -hmm. The South Fork and Salt fires are still 0% contained, and the governor says people are still looking for family members tonight. Today, we have two devastating, enormous fires. And when I say enormous, it means that they're getting more and more complicated to address. It's too early to tell just how far that devastation goes. But our crews got a good look at some of it today. More than 24 hours after the South Fork and Salt fires sparked near Ruidoso, and community members are waiting to learn what the future holds. Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham says so far one person has died in the wildfires. She also says people are calling fire hotlines looking for family members, although she doesn't know how many people are missing. I don't have an accurate number. I don't know that anyone does. Or again, if you believe that you've got a loved one that uh, is in jeopardy, we want to know about it. We want to do everything we can to locate it. The governor declared a state of emergency for the area, tapping into more money and resources to manage the crisis. The message to New Mexicans is that every resource available while we combat these fires is available. More than 17 agencies are on the ground working together, both federal and state. More than 800 personnel are on the ground providing services, acting as first responders, and battling the fire. That includes 13 hotshot crews and several other specialty fire teams. But our state forester says Tuesday brought shifting winds and dynamic fire conditions. We are doing everything we can safely, and we are concerned about the safety of the firefighters, the aircraft pilots, the residents, and the visitors. So if you think one of your loved ones is unaccounted for, or if you need help reuniting with them, we have a number you can call. There is also a Reunite Ruidoso Facebook page. We've seen many people posting, looking for information about family members and loved ones. It also has resources for evacuees. You can find that hotline and Facebook page at KOB4.com. Just click on this story. Cassie, the big question that a lot of people have 
asked me and I say I don't know is do we have any idea what may have started the fires? Not yet. It's too early to tell. There is some information going around social media right now that an arsonist could be to blame because there were four small fires that unfortunately mm -hmm. these two exploded in size, but it is just too early to tell what the cause could be.